every game needs a level. In Game Maker, levels are called rooms. I'm going to show you the basics of creating and using levels in Game Maker. Then we're going to do a deeper dive into the properties of rooms and layers. And finally, I'll show you the most common mistakes that beginners make when using rooms. Let's dive in. In Game Maker, every new project comes with a room. You can access it by clicking this little room group right here and you can see room one. Clicking on that, we can actually see the room properties over here on the left. To access all of the properties of a room, you can double click on that room and it opens it up. Now, room one is up here with a tab. To get back to workspace one, you can click right here. To get back to it, click on room one once again. If you want to add and create even more rooms, rooms are just like any other asset. So we can right click on a group, create, and then you can select room. As soon as you do that, it's also going to open up a new tab at the top. So let's go back to room one. And over here on the left, we have instances and background. Background controls what you see in the background of your level. So we can change the color to something like a light gray and Instances are where you put your objects. So I've already got an object right here called OBJ player. While I have this layer selected, instances, I'm going to drag my player inside. Now I've put my object in my room, but now this object is actually an instance. To show you what I mean, I'm gonna drag this one over to the left and I'm gonna bring in another one because you can have as many instances as you want. And if I double click on this one, I can click on color and I could change the color to something like green and click OK, close this. And now you can see both of these are OBJ player. One of them is green, one of them is white. If you wanna learn more about rooms, properties and instances, stick around and I'm gonna cover those next. Every new room comes with two layers by default, instances and background. Let's explore instances first. So let's click on that and then we can see the actual properties of this. So down here we can see the layer name, which we can change. You can see the instances that are in it and you also have the properties like depth and the filters and effects. So we can actually apply a specific filter and effect to this, which is kind of fun. One of the really cool ones down here is heat haze and you can make this really big by going to the distort amount and you can crank this up and kind of spread it all around and really distort your objects. So you can apply individual filters and effects to every single layer in your room. Now, if we go to background, there's a few more options here, including things like adding a sprite as the background. So if you wanted to have a full sprite or even an animated one, you can do that. You can change the color like we did before. You can also horizontally and vertically tile and stretch a sprite if you have it in there. You can change the offset, speed, animation speed, and depth as well down here. And then of course you can apply a filters and effect to this layer as well, which I'm not going to do because it's going to get a little too crazy. Then we have the room properties itself. So we have to click on a room and then we can see the settings over here on the left. So we have persistent, clear display buffer, width, and height. Let's just talk about these width and height right now. By default, it's set to 1366 by 768. If we were to change this to something like 2000 by 2000, and then click on this center fit, you can see this room has grown substantially. So if we run our game right now, we are seeing everything inside of this room. But if we had a 10,000 by 10,000 room, that's when we would need to start learning and using viewports and cameras, which are right here in the settings as well. We're not going to talk about them now, but they allow you to see just one small section of your room and move around a player or an object inside of there. And that's basically everything you need to know to get up and running, changing the properties of your room. Stick around to the next section and I'll show you the most common mistakes I see that cause a lot of frustration when adding and changing room properties. First off, let's take a look at what room is actually starting when your game runs. That is dictated over here 
by this little house icon. As soon as you add more than one room, you can change which one starts when you run your game. If we click on this little house icon, it opens up the room manager window. And we can drag these rooms around to change the order. Whichever one is on top is the one that will run. You can see now that room two has the house icon and we haven't done anything to it. So it will open up with just a blank black room. So if you are running your game and you are making changes and you're not seeing them, make sure that you have your room that you're editing with the house icon that's actually running when you start your game. Next up is depth. Every layer has a depth and by default, the layer depth is the one that's on top is the one that you can see the most of, and then you have the one behind it. So instances is on top, followed by background, and that is not an accident. If we move the background on top of instances, that is actually now all that we can see. It looks like we have nothing else in our game, but that's not true because we have two player instances in our room. But the background layer is now on top, so we can't see the instances. So drag the background back down here and you'll be okay. You can manually change the depth of these rooms, which I don't encourage you to do unless you really understand why you're doing it and what will happen. Otherwise, you could have your background layer down here and actually change the depth of your room so that it is hiding everything, even though it doesn't look like it should be. This is a very common mistake when you start adding in multiple backgrounds and you accidentally put one above the instances, everything vanishes and it looks like there's nothing there at all. So the last issue I see is when people drag a sprite into a room and they think it's their object. So in this case, let's go to room two and I will quickly put in some code to make this player object move to the right. So I'm going to use GML visual and I'm just going to drag in speed of five. This will make the player object move five pixels every frame to the right. In room two, if I drag the player object in and run it, that's exactly what's going to happen. Great. But a lot of times people will accidentally drag their sprite into their room. They'll see this message and click create, accidentally creating an asset layer, which is only for sprites and sequences. It doesn't run any code, but then they'll think they have their object inside of here and nothing will happen. Nothing runs because sprites don't run any code. So if you are dragging an object into your room and you see this error, make sure it is your object. And if it is, click cancel and go to your instances layer. You have to have the layer selected you want and then drag this in. When we do that, our instance is now in the room and everything is all set just the way it should be. If you've run into any errors outside of what I covered, leave them in the comments below. Let's help each other out. If I missed anything that you think everybody should know, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you for joining me. If you want to see more from me, check out the links in the description down below. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.